Welcome to this video from the P-Way Engineer. In this video, we are looking at railway switches. Expect to learn what switches are and their function. How to tell the left hand and right hand switches apart. What the different parts of a switch are called. How the gauge is maintained through a set of switches. And finally the two important dimensions of switches. So let's get started. Please share your thoughts or ask any questions in the comments. Switches are the movable sections of rail that allow trains to be directed between two routes or tracks. Switches are a key area where signaling and track disciplines meet. Signaling equipment called Points Operating Equipment, or POE, is used to move the switches. Other equipment, known as detection, is used to ensure that the switches are fully closed in either position. This is key to avoid trains derailing when traveling over sets of switches. When we talk about switches, we refer to them as sets. A pair of switches is known as a full set. A half set is one switch. It is common that half sets are replaced individually as, and when issues or defects arise. When we talk about switches we often refer to left and right hand sides. But how do we know which is which? The answer is to stand at the front of the switches. The half set on your left, is the left hand half set. The half set on the right, the right hand half set. Get even more value from our channel by visiting our website. You'll find exclusive content and access to our online store. Head over to the pwayengineer.com now to see all that we have to offer. Click the link in the description. Switches have a number of parts to them, which each have a name and a function. Let's take a tour of a switch, the different parts and what they do. Firstly, the stock rail. The stock rail refers to the fixed rail on each half set. It is welded into the track at either end and is secured by base plates through the switch's length. It is a full section of rail, apart from through the area where the switch rail contact, here some machining may have been done to ensure the switch can sit flush to the stock rail. Next up, the switch rail. The switch rail is the part of the half set that moves. It is on the switch rail that the wheel transfers between the two rails. To allow this to happen, the switch rail has a reduced profile at the start, that gradually increases through its length until it reaches a full rail section. The inspection and maintenance of the switch rail profile is a critical maintenance activity to avoid trains derailing. For much of its length, the switch rail is free. It is not clipped down like normal rails and the stock rail. It sits on special base plates, that either have lubricated sliding surfaces, slide chairs, or rollers to facilitate its smooth movement between positions. Because of this free movement, switch blades can become damaged easily if the sleepers underneath are voiding. Each end of the switch rail is known by a different name. The switch toe is at the planed end of the switch. When looking into a set of switches, they are the first part of the switch you will come to. A key part of switch design is protecting the toe. This is for a number of reasons, but a key one is striking the toe drastically increases the likelihood of the switch being split, where the wheel pushes the switch rail away from the stock rail, leading to trains being on the wrong track and ultimately derailing. At the opposite end of the switch to the toe, is the switch heel. At the heel we have heel blocks. These blocks join the stock and switch rails together, normally with high tensile bolts. At the heel blocks, we can also see the radius of the different routes. 
Given that both switch rails are free, unlike the stock rails, how is the gauge maintained? The gauge is maintained through the use of stretcher bars. These hold the switch rails the correct distance apart, and ensure that when the switches are swung, both switch rails move in tandem. The longer the switch, the more stretcher bars are required. There are two dimensions that are important when it comes to switches, these are the switch length and the radius. The length of the switch is measured from the end of the stock rail, at the front of the switch, to where the switch panel ends after the heel blocks. It is expressed as a letter, with the shortest switch denoted as an A switch, right up to the longest switches, H switches. The shorter the switch the tighter the radius the turnout has, although the exact radius depends on the overall track design on site. As short switches have tighter radius, the speed at which a train is allowed to traverse the turnout route is low. H switches, with their longer lengths and large turnout radii are suitable for the highest speeds. Switch length and radius are key drivers in the overall layout and footprint of railway junctions. Check out the channel and video description for further videos on the different railway junction configurations. That brings us to the end of this video on railway switches. Now you know the names of parts of the switch, what switches do and much more. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you found it informative and engaging. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, be sure to hit the subscribe button and join our community. We have a lot more exciting content on the way, and you won't want to miss a single video. And while you're here, why not take a moment to explore our channel and see what other fascinating topics we cover. There's so much to learn, and we're always adding new videos to keep you informed. So hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you again for watching, and we hope you learned something new today.